So quaternion symmetry group, which is a beautiful symmetry group um, that, that uh, is a symmetry group of the quaternions, the group of order eight, not to be confused with the unit quaternions, which um, is kind of like a three sphere and it's an infinite three sphere kind of group, or the quaternions themselves, which are kind of like in 4D space in the geometric interpretation. So the quaternion symmetry group, and if anyone has ever like heard of this or worked with this, I would love to know because as far as we know, this is the first time anyone has represented the quaternion group as a symmetry group geometrically. Um, <coughs> right, so, so the monkey model is by Will Sigerman and then Henry uh, came to my rescue to make an actual object that has this symmetry group. And um, here's a little animation that Henry made of uh, it rotating. So, so the actual four-dimensional object is just rotating with a projection, looks like it's warping, um, rotating around on axis. Uh, okay, and this is a 3D model, which you can just see over there. Um, and here's kind of the idea of how there's these monkeys arranged in the cubes. So I'm like, oh, how, how do we do this group? What are we gonna do? And Harry says, well, of course, we use monkeys. They're the natural way to, to show s symmetry in a cube where, where you need something asymmetric in the cube. Um, so each monkey is connected to the next with a quarter turn. The entire object in the end has no mirror symmetry. It has no rotational symmetry, no regular rotational symmetry in four dimensions. No mirrors, no rotations. What it has is an isoclinic rotation of 90 degrees. There's no single rotations, but in 4D, you can kind of rotate in two planes, two um, perpendicular planes at the same time. And that is the only symmetry this has is isoclinic rotations in a few different ways, and it's quite surprising. Um, Okay, wait, but before I get too into that, I just want to kind of explain what I'm doing, where I'm at. I've been making videos on the internet about math and things for a few years now, full time. And uh, right now, I, I recently moved to a new office and I'm with a new group, the CDG, the Communications Design Group. And I have this whole big office to play with. So what do you do when you have a great big office to play with? You get a geodesic dome in your office and you throw math, art, recreational math, parties. Um, so I started a research group. This is my co-founder, Andrea Hoxley. Um, and many other people are also involved. Gwen Fisher is one of the organizers. Um, so some of the people around here have been here. And it's, it's like a Bay Area math, art, recreational math research group where we get together and have a, a fun time. So if you're in the Bay Area, let me know. Um, this is from a math dance party we had a few weeks ago where we did things like braid ribbons into um, braids, braid ribbons into braids, yeah. Um, braid people into various things. Here we are making a 10 strand braid uh, that ended up being, oh, is that Lucas? No, that's not us. Lucas is somewhere in there. Um, 10 strand braid. Uh, here is a four strand braid we made by dancing around with our ribbons and, and we simulated binary addition also, but I'll get back to that. We had a palindrome party. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's a research group, so, so we were trying to discover and invent a game that had uh, c cards that had different words on them, and you have to put them together into palindromes in various ways. So um, oh, here's a couple of people trying to prove um, the best strategy for playing Mint Nim. <laughs> Invented, I think that was Lucas, uh, Lucas Garin, who uh, you've, you've seen cubing. Um, and at these parts, like everyone needs to participate in the research. So one person brought, you had to bring a palindrome to get into the door of the palindrome party. One person is like, oh yeah, my palindrome is babe, kelp, pasta, okra, banana, banana, oats, apple kebab. And I'm like, babe, babe, kelp, pasta, okra, banana, banana, oats, kebab. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, babe, kelp, pasta, okra, banana, banana, bark, oats, apple kebab. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, now, now back to the, uh, the, the 4D monkey thing. Um, our motivation for this was I was talking to Mark Tenbosch about his game he's working on. It's a 4D puzzle platform and it's actually programmed in 4D and you're working with different 3D sl slices. Here's a screenshot 
And um, everything you see here actually is a slice of a 40 thing. The cubes that are arranged there are actually hypercubes. Um, the windmill is also modeled in 4D, so if you take a, a perpendicular slice of it, you can see the inside of the windmill with the gears turning. It's, it's really cool. Um, but the question is, when you have a 4D game, uh, what do you do for textures? Because um, when you have a game that has 3D cubes, here's another screenshot, you can kind of guess what, what we're slicing in the middle, what 4D object is in the middle of this that we're seeing a little slice of. Um, hint, it's a 120 cell. Um, so you, you want to have cubes that have a texture. And in a 3D game, you could have a 2D texture on top of your cube. In a 4D game, you need a 3D texture. And the question is not only just how do you get a 3D texture, but how do you get one that wraps around the object so that there's no seam? So um, uh, I guess in the 2D version, when you're wrapping around the edge, you want, you want your, your, there to be no seam. You want it to connect. And Mark was asking me about this, and I'm thinking about it. Oh, how could you arrange cubes into a hypercube so that like everything connected? And then I got to thinking about like, but we don't want it to have like mirror symmetry because that would be too obvious. And um, eventually, I'm like, okay, well, well, what are we gonna do? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, here's this object. But does it work? I have no idea. I drew up this whole thing, and I'm like, Henry, help me. We need to make something that has this symmetry group. And and he did. So um, basically, each little cubelet, if you put it together. Um, here, opposite faces are going to have a quarter turn. Um, but this actual object, when you put it together, uh, this cube has no symmetry. Even though opposite faces are the same, they have this quarter turn, and they're all quarter turning, there's no actual symmetry in this cube. Um, but when you have cubes that match up with a quarter turn, you can kind of have this infinite array of cubes moving forward with a quarter turn. And hey, wouldn't it be cool if there were four of those, so not only, this is, you know, you have to connect them up in, in 4D, but not only would you be moving around 90 degrees, you'd be moving the cube 90 degrees, it would be both 90 degrees, you could have this nice cycle, this fourness, like just like a, a cycle in the hypercube. And then I'm thinking, well, okay, isn't it cool that that works? 90 degree rotations going around, but, but you know, there, there's another set of four cubes in the hypercube, um, and could it possibly work? No, it can't possibly work. It couldn't possibly match up with the same exact cube into the hypercube. Um, and it turns out it does. Not only do the cubes match up, you get these two nice cycles of four going around with their isoclinic rotations. Not only that, but then the other two possible ways to have isoclinic rotations also work. And it's, it's just nuts that this works as a symmetry group. It's beautiful. It turned out to be the quaternions, the, the quaternion group. Um, and it's, it's awesome. So then Henry says, yeah, yeah, you know, if we want a cube, it can't have symmetry in itself in the cube or else we'll have symmetries we don't want. We want to get rid of the mirror symmetry and the rotational symmetries. Uh, so, so um, of course, a monkey is the natural way to do that. And a monkey standing like this would have bilateral symmetry. But when the monkey is posed, uh, that gets rid of the bilateral symmetry of the monkey. So there's monkeys. And they're connected with um, a quarter turn along the hand to tail axis, a quarter turn on the head to foot axis, um, quarter turns from the, I guess, hand to other, other hand, other foot axis. Arrange them into a hypercube. Here is four of them. And it just, it just works. It mathematically beautifully works. You get monkeys in a hypercube with the quaternion symmetry group. And as far as I know, this is the first time that symmetry group has ever been made into a thing or that, that uh, represented as, as like a geometric rotations in, in like 4D space. And it's really cool. I like it. Um, note, the mirror image does not have the same group as the, uh, the original because it's, it's probably metacarl. I don't know. We were trying to, to figure out the details. But um, the thing is, when you have a quarter turn to the right, if you take a mirror of that, now it's a quarter turn to the left. So if you try to do a quarter turn to the right, it's no longer a symmetry. Um, and, and it's actually got this really funky chirality. It's probably parachiral, which, yeah, not going to go into that in this talk. <laughs> Um, and, and you could think of each monkey itself as a, the point of the duel of the hypercube. 
Um, and yeah, I have more slides, but I'm probably running out of time. Uh, um, time. <laughs> <laughs> Near time. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, but the, the questions this brought up to me about, oh, representing symmetry groups geometrically, um, is all these questions, because these two objects have different geometric symmetry groups. One has lines of mirror symmetry, the other has rotations, but they're both the same abstract group. So it's not, it's not this one-to-one -one thing where you can take a symmetry group uh, as an abstract group and then make it a geometric actual symmetry. Like, it's not obvious how to do that. So I, I don't know, and maybe that's why I haven't heard people talk about all the four-dimensional symmetry groups before, although there are a lot of them, but this is the best one, the quaternion symmetry group. Um, yeah, you can think of it as the elements of the quaternion group and monkeys. This is kind of the uh, unfolded Euclidean version, and then you know you, you fold up all the monkeys in 4D, as you do. Um, so yeah, just gonna let that run for a moment. This is going rotating around one of those isoclinic axes or double axes. I don't even know what you would call an isoclinic double axis of Rognar. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's my talk. Thank you. Bye.